law of nature. It is a specialization of a law of nature. And there correspondingly must be some similarities appearing because if you specialize something, suppose you send x alpha minus 3 or minus pi, right, to, to 0. I send x alpha to pi. Now I have a, a strange non-integer. Well, then 1 divided by this is, is going to give you a singularity. So singularities in theories come from the fact that you have used the wrong numbers. And then, the, then I have this argument with my 1 over n. The physicist will say, yeah, that's strange. So yes, but if you tell me, and I'm just a mathematician, I'm open for suggestion. If you tell me that there's a finite number of, of units, a finite element of a finite number of events, interactions and everything included in the universe, then I take that number, I take one divided by that number as a unit, and everything is an integral multiple of that. You cannot measure, you cannot measure anything that will not be an integer multiple of that if you, if you make your unit so small. Which, and, and the fact is that I don't have to make it zero because you tell me that it's finite. So I'm not sure about that. But if it's finite, then there's the smallest n that I can, the biggest n that I can use so that everything is an integral multiple of, of the unit. So why do you use degrees and not degrees divided by n? Something like that. So there is a kind of reason to argue. But for me, it's a more philosophical reason. I, I, the, the numbers do not exist. They are only existing in our minds. We, we were not happy with that. The Greeks were using scales and got puzzled by irrationality. And now we said, oh, no problem. We, we do the real numbers for a while. And then we, we apply this kind of system in our head to something that we call reality without ever having to prove that we are allowed to do that. So I, I, I said this morning, you know, why do you measure temperature with the number? And what is the product? You never, in any physical measurement, you never really can make the product of these things because these things have units and if you make the product it's the square of the unit it's not the same thing even distance eh? distance this if you have five meters you don't do five meters times five meters as a distance you never use the product in a measurement mm -hmm. you can use five times five meters but that's abstract that's not in the measurement so the measurement is independent of, of a number system and therefore you could just as well me measure with with quaternions with some non-commutative numbers, and in fact with some abstract, with a free algebra, you can measure with anything, and do simple manipulation. So it's a choice, and, and, and that's what I want to avoid as long as possible. And it's not necessary to avoid this for always, but I think in a basic and more philosophical understanding of observations of natural, perhaps, phenomena, uh, there is no, no room for real numbers, because you, you, you twist it into your mind, in a picture that has been created by your teachers, but that has no relation with reality. As far as I can see, you can contradict me, I'm, I'm open for arguments, but I can't see any reason for that. So abstract mathematics is very well for approximating phenomena, and certainly locally. Uh, but, in, in, but I saw in the quotes several times that the people were saying that. People were actually saying this, this this philosophical, this philosophical problem about the observation and the reality being different. But they never draw the conclusion. And the next line they're doing real numbers. So I want to draw the conclusion and say, okay, fine, let's avoid this as long as possible. Let's not put any conditions in the beginning. And then, oh, this is what I get. Such a model for the model. I, of course I did. And I didn't throw away everything because otherwise this page would be blank. <laughs> I, I still kept topology, for example, or, or order. But that's all. And, you can't use your argument to the whole idea of having a ring, like having two operations which are interacting. Yes, of course. Yeah. Well, by the way, where is the ring? No, <laughs> it's not a ring. But well, of course, I'm, I'm putting on a mask here, because all I do with it is algebra. <laughs> so I come from algebra, and I, I, I'm glad to have rings. And in these rings, very often there's a field. But then you're doing a special theory where you have specialized. Yeah. You're not doing reality. And if you want to do reality, I'm afraid we will never be able to solve infinitely many equations with, with non-commuting and maybe even non-associative and whatever. We have, all this structure we are putting on this does not exist. And it, it's always a next step of the generalization. But the funny thing seems to be that you get, you, you, what, what chaos has a double meaning here, I guess, but you get more and more into a chaos if you drop, if you drop your assumptions. But nevertheless, you get interesting terms about it and perhaps in physics, theories instead of theorems. So uh, that's not bad, it's the only thing we humanly can do, right? Mm -hmm. 
But I so the theory of everything, well, I, I think that's a joke. But uh, okay, for the moment, I think I'll leave it there, and I, I could do, and I will if you let me explain this the definition of non-commutative topology and then yeah, the dynamics and so on. Yeah. But next, uh, next in your next talk, Freddie. Or... Yeah, yeah, sure. <laughs> Are you no. not getting excited? But you know, this is this is great. Yeah. Okay. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you.